In this video we are going to talk about configuring constraint delegation in order to be able to perform Hyper-V migrations. And uh, as an info, in case you see uh, this error when you are trying to do a remote uh, live migration, then it means that you need to uh, do what I show in this video. And uh, just to set the context, uh, that error happens when uh, you are trying to do a live uh, migration and you are trying to do it either from the source server or from uh, uh, your computer or another computer that is not the server on which the virtual machine is placed right now. And this happens because of the two uh, hop uh, security feature of Active Directory. Let's say that you are on a computer, you log on to a Hyper-V server, you passed your credentials to that Hyper-V server, and then from that server you are trying to do a live migration of a VM from another server. In that case your credentials will go to the second, will try to go actually to the second server, but it will not be possible because of the limitation from Active Directory, which is a good thing uh, security-wise. This scenario can also be true if you are logged on to the server that should receive the virtual machine, you connect with the Hyper-V manager to the server that now hosts the machine, and you try to do a live migration. This will not work. And uh, we discussed the problem, let's also discuss the solution and uh, the secure solution because you could also do it less securely, which I will not cover and I do not really agree with. So here we need to do Active Directory Constraint Delegation, which means that we need to allow a server to be trusted to pass uh, credentials from another server. In this way, we will manage to do a remote live migration. And just to be more secure, we are going to allow this delegation to happen only for two services, the CIFS service and the Microsoft Virtual System Migration service. These two are needed because CIFS controls the uh, file part. If, for example, it needs to create folders on the destination or copy the VM files. And the uh, uh, Microsoft Virtual System Migration Service will register the machine in Hyper-V on the destination uh, and will configure the virtual machine. Before we go on with actually configuring a constraint delegation, let me show you in a graphical way uh, what are the two scenarios in which you would need it. Okay, so let's see the first scenario. You have your PC on which you have uh, RSAT installed and you use the Hyper-V manager to uh, connect to HV1. And of course, this means that you will present your credentials. You are authenticated and everything works. On HV1, you have a virtual machine and you would like to migrate it to HV2. Now, HV1, of course, will try to connect to HV2 with your credentials. And seeing as this will be the second hop of your credentials in uh, this exchange, Active Directory will say no, this is not allowed. And this is the end of the road, you can't perform your migration uh, in this way. Because you just connected remotely to a server, you can't also connect in a chain to the second server without delegation. And now here's the second scenario in which you have uh, two Hyper-V servers, HV2 hosts the VM that you want to migrate, but for some reason you are logged on to HV1. So you really are logged on to this server. You open Hyper-V Manager and 
connect to HV2. And this, uh, of course, this works. And now from HV1, you have a connection to HV2. You see the VM and you want to try to migrate it. Now when you do this, of course, HV2, using your credentials, will try to contact HV1. It doesn't know the context that we are in. So it will try to do this. It will try again to use your credentials to go to HV1, which again Active Directory will say no, you are not permitted and we are again blocked. These are the two scenarios in which for sure you will need to uh, configure Active Directory constraint delegation and let's move on to the code. I'm on my domain controller because I already have because I already have the Active Directory tools uh, installed on it and we are going to configure constraint delegation in the following way. We are going to tell HV1 to trust HV2 and at the same time we are going to tell HV2 uh, to trust HV1. So we can uh, make live migrations from one to the other without uh, any problem. Now before I continue to uh, configure this, I first want to show you that really it will not work without these settings in place. I am on HV1 and I connected with, uh, with Hyper-V Manager on HV2. I have this virtual machine that I want to live migrate, even though it's shut down, to HV1. Let's see what happens. We go to move. Next, we specify we want HV1 as the destination server. Move uh, everything. As far as folder goes, let's choose the test folder. It's OK. Next and finish. And you see we get this error. Now after we configure delegation, this should work. OK, so let's configure uh, delegation for the two Hyper-V servers. First we will do it for HV01, then for HV02. And what we will actually do is the following thing. First we need to trust HV02 for delegation when it comes to the CIFS and Microsoft Virtual System Migration Service. And also set HV01 as trusted for delegation. So this is important vice versa. Uh, when we configure these two settings, also this has to be configured. When we set these two things, also this has to be set. So this is what we need to do for each server. Let me select these four commands and run them. And just so I sh you know what to look for, in the Active Directory uh, tools, you can go to delegation and you will see that now on HV01 we trust for these two services HV02. And of course we will do this also for HV02 right now. And just so the two settings can take effect immediately we have to restart the two Hyper-V servers. And I'll use the force since I'm uh, connected to HV01 right now. And with the two servers restarted, now everything should be fine with this live migration. Let's try it out. Move. Next. HV01. Okay. Let's choose the destination folder on HV01. And I want uh, this one. And this is the moment of truth. 
And since the machine is offline, it was instantaneous actually. We see that now on HBO1 we have also uh, this virtual machine, which means that our constraint delegation settings worked. If you found this video useful or enjoyed it, I would appreciate you leave a like or maybe a comment to let me know if it helped you. And if you're not subscribed, uh, please consider subscribing so you see whenever I upload a new video. And thanks a lot for watching.